Good day. I'm going to tell you about how this passion for amaranth, malnutrition, and poverty began. I had the opportunity to be the president of an NGO, and my friends and I decided to make Montessori materials for a rural school. But the day we delivered the materials, the directress of the school was incredibly sad. She told me, Mary, I just received the results from our children. They are so undernourished, they will never make it past the third grade. Their brains have not developed. We are late. This knowledge struck me. I felt so angry with my blindness, how I had dedicated so much of my team's time to something that was so unessential. So we tried to feed the children with a porridge that promised to alleviate the problem, but we were totally, again, unsuccessful. So this concern with the children, these underdeveloped brains, stayed, has stayed in the back of my mind. Then life gave me the opportunity to become the science coordinator at a local high school. My responsibilities included the delivery and the organization of the scientific projects for a national contest. I was very worried about originality in science, and I have a brother, my brother John is a PhD in science, and many times he told me how amaranth was his dream, that he wanted to do his research on amaranth so that amaranth's full potential could become part of our world's everyday reality. I didn't know anything about amaranth, so when I check amaranth, it was like I was stunned. Amaranth has such incredible, it has an incredible story, but I felt I had found the solution for the children. So, amaranth's story, I'm going to tell you about it. it. It was a sacred grain from the Aztecs, an ancient culture in Mexico. During the, those times, they said that all our land was filled with the colorful colors of amaranth. All the tribes that surrounded Mexico City paid tribute to the ancient ruler Moctezuma, and they gave them 20,000 tons a year. Today, in Mexico, only 7,000 tons of amaranth are grown annually. They used to feed amaranth only to their ruling and military classes. And, these, and the military were strong, tall, and very religious people. So they used to make figures with blood, and they would give it to their gods so that they could receive protection from storms, earthquakes, and sicknesses. But in the 1500s, when the Spaniards arrived, they wanted to introduce wheat and the Catholic religion. Amaranth's sacredness was in the way, so they forbade the cultivation of this seed, and those who sowed it would have their hands cut off. So Mexico lost the ingredient that made its, its diet perfect. Today, we know that amaranth is recognized by scientists as a leading grain and vegetable. It has, with only 20 grams of amaranth a day, we can assure the full development of a child's brain. It has all the amino acids. It's a complete protein, a substitute of milk, a substitute of meat. The leaf is rich in folic acid and calcium. And it is also a gluten-free, natural antidepressive. So going back to the school, I took the, the students to John's lab to prepare for the contest. And I asked one of John's colleagues, why, if amaranth is so incredible, is it so poorly known? And the doctor turned to me and said, well, I'm just a scientist. I do my part. That day, I decided to become a bridge between science and reality. The students, won the, they demonstrated that amaranth is a prebiotic food and they won the national competition. Another group fed amaranth to chickens that produced low eggs with lower level of cholesterol, and they got into quarterfinals and to finals. But nothing was happening between science and reality, 
And I really wanted to bring Amaranth back to my people. So with the support of my family, I was able to found this nonprofit organization called Mexico Tierra de Amaranto. And we have ident I have identified two basic strategies. One, for the urban areas, because we need to create a market. Very few people know about Amaranth's incredible properties. So we have organized lots and lots of scientific, culinary, and educational events. The awareness of Amaranth has grown. And every day, it is more common to find amaranth-based products in the stores in Mexico. For the rural communities, amaranth is the strategic grain that can help us alleviate or improve nutrition, health, and living conditions. Our aim is to awaken the people to the fact that with amaranth, they can assure excellent nutrition for their families. We address two themes. One is self-esteem, and the other is a positive vision of the future they can create with amaranth. The first decision is that they grow and consume amaranth from a 12-meter kitchen garden. Fortunately, after 10 years, we have some facts. We are currently feeding a group of indigenous children and of diabetic women with um, menus enriched with 30 grams of amaranth, and we have very positive results. In only six months, the immune system of the children improved significantly, and the levels of cholesterol and the, levels of the glycemic levels of the cholesterol patients diminished. There are also some limitations. It is very important that we understand poverty. Change doesn't just happen. Change needs discipline. Change needs courage. Change needs motivation and a lot of supervision. It is also very important that we help our people develop the capacities so that they can really solve the problems that limit their productivity. So, a wonderful, I, we have implemented a, an, a wonderful solution, and that is to train emerging community leaders so that they can become our community promoters, amaranth, cooking with amaranth instructors, and also they become powerful change makers. And so with these promoters, we, are, we have been able to organize the communities so that they learn how to build ferro cement cisterns to capture rainwater. Adela, a promoter, once told me, my life before the cistern was ruled by the sound of water. Every day I would lie awake, sometimes until 4 o'clock in the morning, waiting for the water to arrive. And when it came, I would rush with my buckets to fill the, bucket, the buckets with water for my family before it would finish. Today, Am today Adela is a cistern building instructor, and 19% of the families in her community have a cistern and an amaranth kitchen garden, thanks to Adela. Veronica, another promoter, is a mother of five. And she told me that she and her husband didn't know anything about amaranth when her two first children were born. She had little milk to breastfeed them, and she was continually tired. But she started consuming amaranth for her third child, and her story changed. She had enough milk to feed and give away. Her three younger children are taller and more energetic than the first two. And today, Veronica is in charge of 90 direct beneficiaries and in charge also of three communities. We want to become a self-sustainable organization. So we have a business model called SEMBA, which assure, buys the surplus of, it's a socially responsible company that buys the surplus of amaranth leaf and grain that is grown in the kitchen gardens. SEMBA builds collaborations with the industry and uh, assures the transformation and commercialization of innovative amaranth products. That is the strategy. 
for 10, more than 10 years, I have seen the positive results that Amaranth brings to our communities. I believe that we can build and create a system that alleviates malnutrition and poverty in which we all win. Amaranth is an incredibly powerful strategy. It brings results. I touch the future with my heart, with my heart, because that's the way I work. I, with all my hope, with all my faith, and I try to include all efforts so that Amaranth full potential can, full, can soon become part of our world's everyday reality. I trust and I try to do my part. Thank you.